Hi. Uh, today we'll continue on chapter uh, two. Motion in one dimension. If you remember, we talked about an object moving in one dimension. And then we talked about especially an object moving with a constant acceleration. So we came up with the three equations of motion for constant acceleration. <clears throat> and if I remind you of these equations, we said final velocity equal initial velocity plus acceleration time. And then final velocity square, initial velocity square plus twice acceleration multiplied by the displacement, delta x. <clears throat> and delta x, displacement, initial velocity multiplied by the time plus half acceleration time square. These are the equations for constant, constant acceleration. When A equal constant. And then we, talk, we talked about acceleration, an object moving with a constant acceleration, a special case, like free fall. So we developed the equations for free fall. And they are the same three equations, but the acceleration becomes gravity acceleration. And it's always down, minus g. And the displacement, delta x, becomes delta y. <coughs> so the equation. Final velocity, initial velocity minus acceleration of gravity, g, multiplied by the time. Final velocity square, initial velocity square minus twice acceleration displacement vertical, y. And the last one, displacement vertical, y. Initial velocity multiplied by time minus half acceleration times square. In all these equations, we said, just be careful of the sign. Positive means to the right, negative means to the left. For free fall, positive means up, negative means down. <clears throat> and delta y, displacement in vertical or in free fall, is positive if your final position is above your initial position. So if this is initial y, where you have the initial point, and you finish at this position, final. So what is delta y now? Pointing up. So it is positive. But if you have your initial here, and you end up finally here, your delta y is pointing down, negative. Regardless of what happens between initial and final, the shortest. Maybe you're throwing something up, goes up, and they say this is the ground. So where is the initial point? Here. Where is the final point? Maybe you're talking about this point here. Where is the velocity here, the final? Here, velocity, initial. So if this is your initial point, and this is your final point for your calculation, not final of the motion. What do you see? The final position is below the initial, so delta y is pointing down. Regardless of what happens, look, it went up and come down. This is distance, but this is displacement, shortest. <clears throat> so always think of the, where is the final position? Below the initial or above the initial? Of course, for, velo for velocity, if it's pointing up, positive, pointing down, negative. <clears throat> and uh, what else we talked about was that maybe uh, we said, what is velocity instantaneous? It's the derivatives of position with time function, yeah? <clears throat> so if you have an xt function, position by function, you derive it. It gives you the velocity instantaneous. And if you have velocity function, 
you derive it, dv dt, it gives you acceleration function or acceleration at any time. <clears throat> or if you think of position and acceleration directly, what is acceleration in terms of position? Second derivative. I can say acceleration is the second derivative of position with time. <coughs> so if you start with x, you have to differentiate twice to get to acceleration. But if you start with v, differentiate once to get the acceleration. <coughs> so this is, if I put it as a sequence, if you start with xt function, what is next? vt function, at function. So if you have position time and the question is about velocity, derive. If you have velocity and the question about acceleration, derive again. OK? Now let's think in the reverse. Think if you start with acceleration and the question is about velocity you have to do integration and if you start with velocity and the question is about position you integrate so you should be able to do the reverse here we have derivatives but if you're going up towards v what is it? Integration. V to x integration. Okay. So what we'll do today, we start from here. <coughs> if you have a, an acceleration function, how do you find the velocity? And remember, for velocity and speed are the same, except that velocity has no, uh, speed has no direction. So the question is, what's the speed or what's the velocity is the same, except that you remove the minus here. <clears throat> so let's start with uh, an example for an acceleration. <clears throat> Could you check if you can see me when I'm here? No. Just go there. No, the okay. no, I'm here. Start from here. So if I write here, it shows? OK. And that land. So. <clears throat> now, let's say. I've been given an equation of acceleration. Example. An object moves with an acceleration A equal to T. This is the acceleration function. And you can see the acceleration here is not constant, it's variable, it changes with time. At t equal one second, the object has a velocity Two meter per second. And at T equal two second, the object has 
as a position equal to <coughs> three meters. So an object moves with an acceleration a equal to t. At t equal one second, the object has a velocity two meter per, and at t equal two seconds, the object has a position equal to. Okay, what's the question here? A. <coughs> What is the velocity at t equal three seconds? B, what is the position of the object at t equal <clears throat> Let's choose a time which is not there. Sorry. One second. Mm, that's the velocity. Well, okay, I can change it. Let's put it th four seconds. So you don't mix up the values. <clears throat> Now, where are we in acceleration? What's the question about? Part A. So if you look at the chart there, where is your start? Down. You want to go? So what do you have to do? Integration. So if I have acceleration function, I have to integrate it, yeah? So we start with the function A equal to T. And what I have to do? Integrate it. But be careful here. It's, it's not right you put integration like this. This is not right. Because you cannot integrate when you have a function. You integrate when you have a differential equation, when you have a rate of change. Do I have a rate of change here? This is t and this is a. There is a rate of change, but it's hidden. What is a as a rate of change? dv over, so don't do this, this is wrong. Replace a by dv dt equal to t. Now you have a differential equation, you can, or an equation which is, has a, a rate of change. Separate the va variable, put the t in one side, v in the other side, so I have dv 2t dt. Now, can I integrate now? Yes. So I put the integration sign on both sides. Here you're integrating a dv. Now, integration, differentiation, cancel each other. Yeah? So what is left? v. Here you are integrating what? 2 is constant. t dt. So it's 2 t squared over Remember, when you integrate, either you have a definite or indefinite integration. Yes. Definite means you have limits. Indefinite, when you don't have. Here we have, we have no limits, so we have to add a constant, plus C1. Don't put it C, C1, because we have more than one C. So what do you see here? Velocity as a function of? Time, but the problem is, I don't know what is. So what do I need? I need what's called initial conditions to find C1, which means I have to know a time and the velocity at that time to, to evaluate C1. Go back to the question. At what time you know the velocity? When t is two seconds, what's the velocity? Or when t is one, sorry. When t is one second, the object has a velocity? 
So we substitute here. V is 2. T is 2 by 1 square. Of, of course, the 2 with 2. So your velocity is T square plus C1. <coughs> so we have 1 square plus C1. Take the 1 to the other side. So C1 is equal to? One. Now I put C back in the equation. So my velocity equation is now VT function T square plus one. Okay. Now I have equation which links time to velocity. Now look at the question part A. What is the at what time? Three. So here I just have to evaluate. Substitute. So what is V at? Three square plus one. Nine, ten. Meter per second. So this is the answer for part A or one. So you got it here? You integrate, but remember when you integrate, you have a constant of integration. You have to evaluate it first. How you evaluate it by the initial conditions given, and then substitute. Let's go to the second part. B, <coughs> what is the position of the object? Which means find x, position, x. Now, where are we now? And velocity. I was in acceleration first. Integrate, you have velocity function. So where you start at? In the chart, you are here. And you want to go to? Going up, yeah? So what you have to do? Another integration for this function. Now again, this function, V equal T squared plus one. Can I integrate now? No, because I don't have a rate of change. Where is the rate of change? dx dt. So replace this one by dx dt, t squared plus 1, and separate the x from the time. You'll have dx equal t squared dt plus dt. Distribute the dt by multiply by 1 and multiply by 1. Now I can integrate. <coughs> Integration derivation. Cancel. So x equal t cube plus t plus c2. Another integration constant. So now what I have to do? Evaluate this c2. How? I have to go back to the question and find initial conditions. At a time, what is the position? Do I have that? Yes. At what time I know the position? At t, two seconds, the position is three. So the position is a three. The time is two cube over three plus two plus c2. <coughs> this is eight over three plus two, three, C2. <coughs> so C2, the final, minus 5 over 3. No, give me a, as a decimal, it's better. Minus 1.66, yeah? Okay, six, okay. So what is my function now? X, T cube over three, plus T minus, this is the position time function, complete. What do I need now to evaluate? At T4, what is the 
position. So I put t equal to 4. I need x at 4. 4 cube over 3 plus 4 minus 1.66. Someone evaluate this. You can find the final answer. X at 4 second meters. 23.6. 7, okay. See, it's significant, okay. <clears throat> so this is how you do, how you evaluate, yeah? <clears throat> now, it's not necessarily each question you do double integration. Because maybe the question start with velocity and ask you about position, so integrate once. Okay, but if you have position, and I ask you about velocity only, one integration. So not always you do all that. This is the detailed solution. You have a, a similar example on the sheet, which I gave you the extra questions. Did you see it on the blackboard? This document. I put an extra file under updated review, but if you have any difficulties today, maybe at, at the end of the class or when I go to my office, bring a flash memory. I'll give you a copy of it. This document is very important, and I'll explain some of it today. So print it out and it. <clears throat> okay. <clears throat> now we nearly finished the theoretical part, except one part is left, which I'll explain it now. It's about graphs. Graphical representation. So I, and I'll put it under the title, Interpretation. Of XT, VT, and AT graphs. Interpretations of XT, VT, and AT graphs. <clears throat> this file, which you'll see on Blackboard, it's a PDF file. What I did in this file, I generated a graph, XT graph. Then I came up with a question about the graph, and I answered it as well. And you find part A, B, C, D. So the first part is about XT, position time, graph. Then, of course, I asked you about, uh, I answered more than 10 questions about XT. Then I moved to another graph. It's a VT graph. I generated a VT graph. Then I came up with the questions about the graph, and I answered them as well. And again, around 10 questions. Then the last part in the document. It's an acceleration time graph. Again, I generated the questions, and I answered the questions in detail. So you have samples. If you go through this document tonight, maybe, and take them one by one, you master the subject graphically. Because most of you, or some of you, have difficulties in interpreting graphs. When it's a question, theoretical, you answer it. But when you have a graph, probably some of you do not have the skills of extracting the information from the graph. And this will teach you how to do it. Of course, I'll go through some, but this is the total. After that, what I did, an example, similar to the example I did now, acceleration time. 
but with a different approach. Again, an example solved about acceleration, but this time I gave you graphical and then equation. This is an example on acceleration. Look, I did the integrations and everything. Then after that, free fall, chapter two, I came up with an example and I solved it in details. So like four or five questions about one. And the last page, I solved two questions from the review problems related to free fall, question 20 and 21. So in the review documents, 20 and 21 are solved here on the last page. You see, that's why this document is so important. It's a masterpiece. You go through it, you learn all. But let's see how, come, <clears throat> how much you can get if I do it on the board. I'll choose nearly the same graph. Yeah? Let's say I have an XT graph, and this is all what I have. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, one, two, three, one, two, minus one. This is zero. Okay, this is roughly the graph. This is time in second. And the y-axis is the position in meters. So what do we have here? A position time graph, xt graph. Now, if you have an xt graph, let's put it this way. What are the questions you are able to answer? Just by looking at the graph, no other help. Now, that document, it gives you all the questions you are able to answer. But I'll go through it with you. First, if you have an XT graph, what is the first question you can answer? The direct question. Position at any time. So what's the position at one second? Two. At three, minus three. Direct question. Position with time. Be careful. This is not distance. This is position. X, location. So this is the first question. Now the second question you can answer is, if you know positions, it means you can calculate the difference and position. So what is that? Displacement. Delta X, displacement. What is displacement? X final minus initial. initial. Now, an example. What is the displacement from one to three? What is x at 1? 2. So x1 is 2. What is x at 3? Minus 3. So what is the displacement? x3 minus x1. Minus 3 minus 2. Minus what? 5 meters. Got it? Final minus initial. Your final position is x3. Your initial is x1. Final minus. 
You got it? This is the second question you can answer. What is the displacement? What is the third question you can answer? No, no be before you go to velocity. Distance. What is the distance, D? Now let's stick to the same question here. D, distance. And again, what is the distance moved, <clears throat> let's say, from 0 to 4? D equal to what? From 0 to 4 seconds. Now, distance different from displacement, yes? We said that. And we said displacement and distance are equal in a special case. When is that? When there is no turning. It means if you prove that between zero and four seconds there is no turning point, then what can you do? Find the displacement from zero to, but use absolute value. Yes? But if, if you prove that between 0 and 4 there is a turning point, then you cannot say displacement from 0 to 4 equal in magnitude to the distance. So this is the question. From 0 to 4, do we have a turning point yeah. or not? Where is the turning point? At what time? At one second. Now, how do you know turning points if you have an xt graph? If you have an xt graph, position time graph, the turning points usually they are the maximums and minimum points. Maximums and? So from 0 to 4, do I have a maximum? Do I have a minimum? No, up to 4. Up to 4, you stop here. Okay? After 4, you know this is a? Minimum. So up to four doesn't mean four is not included. Up to. <clears throat> I can change it to three, it doesn't matter. Okay, but change it to three so you don't get this confusion. Let's say zero to three. Let's change the question. So from zero to three, do I have a maximum or a minimum? Okay. Again, now you get the confusion here. You think this is the minimum. Yeah. Still, uh, you cannot say this is the minimum until you compare it to what happens later. What happens later? Still, you are at the same level, yeah? When you reach four, then you know you're going. So you know it's the minimum. So up to three, you don't know. So one turning point here. This is what? Point. So what I have to do, I have to divide the question. And instead of going from 0 to 3, we say from 0 to 1, and then from 1 to 3. And then from 0 to 1, do I have turning? No. So is distance from 0 to 1 equal in magnitude to displacement? Yes. So what you do here, you say x at 0. How much x as zero? Zero. X at one second? Two. Meters. So how much is delta x here? Two minus zero? Two meters, yeah? This is displacement, yeah? But I want displacement or distance? This is distance number one. From zero to one second. Now the second part. From one to three, what do I need? X at one, X at, what is X at one? Two. X at three. So how much is delta X here? Minus three, minus two. Minus 5. This is delta x, but I don't want delta x. I want the distance. D2. 
absolute value of delta x. I can call it 1 and 2, but I'm just worried that you think it's x1, x2. This is the displacement number 1. Displacement number 2. All right? So now, what's the distance moved from 0 to 3? Add them. So total distance, d1 plus, which is 2 plus 7 meters. <clears throat> Can you see? From 0 to 3, the, displace, uh, the distance is 7. Now, what is the displacement from 0 to 3? Minus a three, minus zero, minus a three. But look at the distance. It's different, yeah? They are not equal because of the tanning point. So how many questions we answered so far? No, position, first one. Displacement, distance, okay? We developed them. Remember all the terms we had for motion? We started with position, then? Displacement, distance after that. No, no. Average velocity and average speed. So if I have an XT graph, can I calculate average velocity and average speed? The answer is yes. Why? Because what is average velocity equal to? And delta X, how you find it? I showed you, yes, yeah? Position one, position two, time one, time two, it gives you average velocity. So let's take a, a question here. Find the average velocity, I'll stick to the same question. Zero to three here maybe, or one to three, doesn't matter. Let's say, what is V average from one, two, three seconds. So what do you need? You need delta x from one to and the time is three to one. So V average x three minus x one over T three minus T one. What is x three? X at three seconds. Minus the three. Minus, three. Minus. X at one. Plus two. Plus two. Over three. Minus one, yeah? Minus five over. Minus 2.5 meter per second. This is the average velocity. From one to three. Remember averages, you need start and finish time. What is the next question I can answer? What do I need for average speed? Distance and what we found here. So you have to find the distance this way, and you divide it over the time taken. Yeah? So let's put it here. S average is D over T or delta T, it doesn't matter, time. Now, find S average from, I'll take this question because I already know the distance, yeah? Zero to, zero to three seconds. So what is the average? The distance from zero to three, how I did it? By parts, yeah? Because there's turning point from zero to three, so it's seven. Divided by the time, three meter per second. So this is how you find the average speed. Now, uh, if you ask uh, for the average velocity, for example, from zero to four. She's asking, if, if, if uh, I ask the question, what is the average velocity from zero to four? four. Yes. 
The velocity needs positions, yeah? yeah? What is the final position? Minus a three. What is the initial position? So minus a three, minus zero, minus a three. Divided by the time, four. Okay. <clears throat> What's next? We covered average velocity and average speed. What comes next? Instantaneous velocity. So if we ask you the question, <coughs> what is the instantaneous velocity at, look, at? Because velocity at one time, not from two. Now, let's say I ask this question. What is the instantaneous uh, velocity at half a second here? So the question is, what is the velocity at t equal? 0.5 seconds. This is a question, yeah? So if you have a graph of xt, are you able to answer a question about velocity? Yes. Remember, velocity means instantaneous. Yes. How? What is velocity? We define it as? Slope, slope of what? Tangent. tangent. Graphically means slope of tangent. V instantaneous equals slope of the tangent where? An xt graph. If you have an xt graph, the tangent at a point means the velocity. Good. Let's go to the graph here. At time half, this is the point. What is the velocity here? What do you have to do? Draw a? But you, can you see this part? It's linear. So is there a difference between the tangent and this line? Which means the slope of this line, same as the tangent slope. Yes. So if I draw a slope here, same as the line. Which means, how do you find the velocity here? Take two points, take two points on around the half. Which means in this part, from 0 to 1 only. So here, if I want V instantaneous at t equal half second, what do I do? Slope of the tangent, yeah? Give me two points on the green line. Uh, the, time, the time is the x-axis. First is x. Why you don't take the 0, 0? 0, 0, yes? 0, 0, 1. And the corner? One, two. And the slope is delta x, because the y here is the position, over delta t, or delta y over delta x in math. So it's two minus zero over one minus, which is what? What is the average velocity from 0 to 1? Same. Same. Why? When you have a linear function, the average and instantaneous are the same. The same. Yeah. So here, the average velocity or instantaneous, they have the same value because they have one slope only. One slope means one velocity. And one velocity means constant. Average and instantaneous are the same. <clears throat> what is the next question? Instantaneous is speed. Is that a problem? If I ask now, what is the speed at? How do you find the speed? Same as? Velocity, but remove the? Okay, so what I'll do, I will not choose this point. I'll choose 
I say, what is the speed at two? What is the speed at two seconds? What is the speed at t equal two seconds? Look here. This is two seconds here. How do you find the speed? You have to find velocity. How do you find velocity? You have to find the slope of the tangent. At this point, how many tangents do I have? And on this part, how many linear? Which means this line, because it's linear, the tangent at 2, or 1 and half, or 1.1, or 2.5, anything between 1 and the 3, you have one slope, which means you have one velocity and one speed. Find the slope here. So what do I say here? Speed equal absolute value of and instantaneous velocity means slope of the tangent line. So at this point, the tangent here, same as the tangent of the whole line, which means I need two points. Give me two points on this line. This point is valid, yeah? Corner is valid. Corner is valid. Okay, so take the easy one. This point and this point, maybe. So I say first point is one, two, and zero, two. Uh, two, zero, sorry. Okay? I'm taking, what's the x axis? One. The y axis, two. One, two. Here, x axis is two, y is zero. <clears throat> so S equal zero, final point, minus two, two minus one, minus two over, but mean absolute value of the slope. Absolute value of the slope. Because you need the speed, not the velocity. Right? <coughs> you got it? What comes next? Find what? Average and? Now, if you have an XT graph, you may be able to answer questions about acceleration or not. If XT, the XT graph is linear, the answer is yes. If the XT graph is nonlinear, the answer is no. You, are you with me? If you have an XT graph, you can answer questions related to average acceleration and instantaneous acceleration if the function is linear or all parts are linear. But if it's nonlinear, you can't. Okay, why when it's linear I can answer? Remember, if xt function is linear, what is the derivative of a linear function? Constant. So what's the derivative of xt in physics? Velocity. So what's the velocity? Constant. And if velocity is constant, what is the acceleration? So what's the answer here? What's the acceleration in each part? In each part is zero. So I'm able here. So if I say, what's the average acceleration from zero to one? Linear. Constant. Zero. From one to four, three, linear, constant, zero acceleration. This is already constant, so zero, zero. Linear, 
zero uh, constant, zero x. So here, a equals zero. Here, zero. Here, of course, is zero. In each part, the acceleration is zero. Now, you might say, why I didn't say it's, uh, the acceleration is zero everywhere? Let's go back to the special points. This one? What is the velocity? Listen. What is the velocity at one second? What is velocity? The slope, the derivatives. What's the derivative at one? It's a corner, undefined. So at one, you don't know what's the velocity. But before one, the slope. After one, the slope. So at corners, this is in calculus. At corners, you don't, you cannot differentiate the function. Sharp corners, you can't. So it's undefined. Yeah. Here at three, corner. Yeah. What's the velocity here? Undefined, not zero, undefined. At four, undefined. That's in velocity. Of course, when it comes to the acceleration, undefined as well. Yeah? It's because it's, you have to know before and after. It's, you can't calculate it, but you have to know how much time you spend here. This is at one. You have to have a delta t, before and after. Before, what is the velocity? Positive. The slope is positive. Mm -hmm. After one, so it means like you're going to the right, suddenly, with no time, not a smooth turn. That's why it's undefined what happens here. And this is practically impossible. You can't have an object going to the right and suddenly goes to the left. It has to have some time to stop and turn. So in reality, you don't see sharp corners. You see a peak. So here, what's the slope? But if you have this, undefined. All right? <coughs> so this is the summary of xt. OK? And Practice on the sheet, you'll find the same questions, all of them. Now, when we say slope, remember, the word slope has two parts, regardless of the graph. A slope has a sign, positive or, and the slope has a value, magnitude, yes? From zero to one, what's the slope sign? Which means the velocity, positive. What is the magnitude of the slope? It's the value, yes? That's the speed, the value. Here, in this part, the slope is negative, means the object went to the left. That's why we say this is a turning point. Positive slope, negative slope. Positive velocity, negative velocity, it means you turn. Here. Do I have a turning point here? What do you call this? This part is called plateau. 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 In math, we call it plateau. A plateau, it's either a maximum or a minimum or none. A plateau, it's either a maximum, minimum, or none in a mathematical function. Physically, what happens here in this graph? What does this mean? From three to four, what happens? Object stopped. So can I close this? So before this, what happens? Going to this point. And after, so 
What do you consider this plateau? A turning point or not? Yeah. Yes? yes? This is just a stop. Stop. You stopped. And then you change. Look, the slope here is? And here? So before the plateau, the velocity is negative. After? So this is a turning point. But when I say point, I mean one point. But here, you can consider all from three to four as a turning point. But which one you take? Take the last one as turning point, four. Because if you say at three or at four, same. You can close this gap, yeah? All right. Let me quiz you on this. This is a plateau, yeah? Is this plateau maximum, minimum, or none? Maximum. Why? Before the plateau. So there's a turning. So if this was an XT graph, do you have a turning point? Either this point or this point or any point in between. Hmm? Turning point. Let's see if you can answer this. <coughs> Is this plateau or not? Plateau. It's a plateau. Is this a maximum, minimum, or none? Why? What's the slope here? Plateau? Still negative. You didn't change. No turning point here. So you can ignore this part. You just say from here to there. As if this part close it doesn't affect. It's not there. What about this plateau? None. Positive, plateau, positive. Right? So a plateau could be a maximum or a minimum or none. This is useful and important because you look for turning points. So you have to know if this plateau a turning point or not. He has a turning point. <clears throat> right. So this way we finish the XT. Okay. Now we take a VT. But you can see the example I gave you, it was linear. Later on, next class, I'll give you nonlinear because it's a little bit difficult. Now, before I forget, before I forget, it's very, something very important. If you have an XT graph, if you have an XT graph, the area under the graph of XT doesn't mean anything in physics. So do not calculate the area under the graph of position time. I don't want to see this mistake, yeah? In a graph of position time, the area under the graph means nothing in physics. Yes? Um, can you ask the grace if you have any classes after this? Is Who? It, is it going to continue that one hour? I can't not? discuss it now. Let's finish the class. And then. So now we take an example of VT graph, velocity time graph. Now. I will not choose the one I gave you here because the one I gave you here, part of it was nonlinear. And part of it was, I want to stick to the linear until you get, you comprehend the idea, and then we go to nonlinear. Yeah? So I'll choose something similar to it, but linear. So let's say we have this VT graph. Look, this time, this is velocity, meter per second. One, two, three, four, five. <coughs> time, second. Velocity, one, two. One, 
One, two, three, four. I don't know if this is possible mathematically, but I just take the points and hopefully it works. Four, uh, sorry, not to four, to three. Let's see if it works. Let's say you have this graph. One, two, three, four, five. Minus four. This is two, okay? Now this one, it doesn't matter, it can go forever. I'm not interested in that part. Now, if we have a velocity time function, what are the questions we can answer? The answer to this question, you can answer all the questions in your head. If you have velocity time, you can find Distance, displacement, average velocity, average speed, instantaneous velocity, instantaneous speed, average acceleration, instantaneous, all the questions, yeah? But before we start, tell me, what is the first question you can answer when you have VT graph? What is that? And what is the speed? Same. What is the velocity at one? Two. What is the velocity at three? What is the speed at three? Four. Plus four. Speed is always positive. So now we answer two questions. Velocity and speed. speed. Direct. What's next? Let's go back now to distance displacements. Yeah? If you have a velocity time graph and the question is about displacement or distance, how do you answer it? No. Integration when you have a function. This is a graph. First, how you find delta x? Displacement. If you have a VT graph, displacement is equal to the area under the graph. Area under the graph. From x1 to x2. Or from t1 to t2. Simple, yeah? Example, <clears throat> what is the displacement from 0 to 4? Find delta x from 0 to 4 seconds. What do I need to do? I have to find the area from 0 to? How many areas do I have? Let me remind you of this because some of you got to. When we say area under the graph, we mean the area between the x-axis and the graph. It doesn't mean the area from the graph to the lowest point, because I've seen this mistake sometime with some students. So where's the x-axis? Is this, yeah? And this is your graph. <clears throat> so the first area between the x-axis and the graph, this is area number? This is the x-axis and this is the graph. Area 2. Of course, I have here another area, but my question is from 0 to? So what is delta x? A1 plus? How much is A1? It's a triangle, yeah? Half. What's the base? And the height? 2. Plus. What's the shape? Triangle. Half. What's the base? Two to four, two. Now, 
Pay attention here. Raise your head. Look on the board. The base is two. What's the height? Wrong. This area is not a real area. It's not length width. So the height here, it doesn't mean like a length or a width or a height. It means velocity. And velocity could be negative, could be? So this, is this, air, this height is a difference in velocity. So as it is, this area is under the graph, so it's negative. Minus 4. So now, 2 minus 4 equal. Can you see? The displacement is negative, and we expect the displacement could be negative sometime or positive. What's the next question? Find the distance. What's the distance moved from 0 to 4? Is there a difference between distance and displacement? Yes. Turning points, yeah? Here, do I have turning points? Where? Wrong. This is not an XT graph. This is VT graph. A, ten, listen, a turning point in VT graph means the velocity goes from positive to negative or from negative to positive through zero. So this is a turning point at two. This is a turning point at four. Or if you don't like to look at it this way, when you want the distance, just use the absolute value of the areas. So what's the distance? What is the distance from 0 to 4 seconds? What's the distance D? What you have to do, same procedure, but distance equal what? Be careful, not absolute value of the displacement, this one, no. Of each area. Because if you put it here, it means you calculate all the areas and then you take the absolute value, which is wrong. Each area is an absolute value. So it's A1, A2, which means 2 minus 4. 2 plus 4 meter. <clears throat> What's the next question I can answer? Remember, if you know displacement or distance, what can you calculate? Average velocity and average speed. So, same question. What is V average from zero to four seconds. What is V average equal to? How do you find delta X from zero to four? Area under the graph, we found it. How much is it? Minus two. Over what? Four. Minus half. Meter pair. Same question now, what is the average speed from zero to four seconds? What do you do? You find the distance. How? Absolute values of the areas. And then divide by the time. So S average equal D over T. D here is? Over the time, four. Three over two, one and a half meter per second. What is next question you can ask? Average, or uh, we answer instantaneous velocity, instantaneous speed. direct, yeah? So average acceleration and how? If you have VT graph how do, or VT function, how do you find acceleration? Derive, yeah? yeah. Graphically, what does it mean? Tangent. Slope of the tangent and the slope of the secant. Why I chose a linear? Because it's 
to, 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 to have the same. Secant and tangent are the same, which means in this question, the average acceleration and instantaneous acceleration, both of them are the same. The slope of the tangent. So, like here. What is the average acceleration AAV from zero to one second? So if you have VT graph, how do you find acceleration average? Slope of the secant, we said before, yes? But from zero to one, it's linear or nonlinear? So secant and tangent are the same, which means find the slope here. How many slopes do I have? Okay, how you find it? You need two points. So this point is one, zero, uh, one, three, uh, one, two, and this is zero, zero. So a average is delta V over but delta V over delta T means slope, yeah? yeah? And what's the slope here? Two minus zero, one minus zero, which is meter per second square. All right? Before you forget, look, I gave you the average acceleration from zero to, what is the acceleration at half? Same. Same. Because it's linear. So can I answer that question? What is the acceleration? What is the acceleration A, instantaneous, at T equal 0.5 second? What's the answer? Acceleration instantaneous equal acceleration average equal Why? Because it is linear. All right? Now she asked me if you want me to continue instead of the extra hour. Anyone's got a class or or you want you have a class after this one? So then I can't. So it will be on Wednesday. We continue, yeah? Now you have enough information to start on the review problem. Next class, I finish both classes, finish the chapter. Thank you.